as Kelly Bo mentioned earlier, um, Dominic Sposito is going to be marking the end of his tenure with the Big Eye after 37 years. And so our next pre presentation will feature one of the most popular figures at the state capitol. We're going to use a video to show you that. Um, he's known for his distinctive glasses, ties, and hats, along with his expertise. Uh, on a personal note, as his good friend Senator John Hoffman once told me, this man was from such a close-knit Italian family back in Des Moines in a community, tight Italian-knit community, he finally realized in the third grade that not all his classmates were cousins. <laughs> he was drafted during the Vietnam War, and upon his discharge, he traveled uh, around the world. Um, is with sadness I'm announcing that after 36 or 37 years of service, our lobbyist and governmental affairs expert Dominic Sposito will retire at the end of May. However, Dominic is assisting us in the search for very capable re replacements who remain, we will remain optimistic as we look forward to the coming 12 months in the 2020 legislative session. Um, April, let's run the, the video for Dominic. I'm just going to say two things about Dominic, short and ugly. Well, I thought I would give a little bit of a perspective when I first met Dominic. I, you know, I was a 25-year-old kid. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, he walks in with this air of confidence, almost cockiness. Uh, he's wearing a, a nicely ta tailored suit. I'm sure it was Italian. My first thought was, there's a guy I don't think I should trust. <laughs> Um, he was a bit too slick for me. I'm a small town. Uh, one of the first times I met Dominic, um, I was a little conscientious. And, and, and I said, Dominic, does this shirt make me look fat? <laughs> and he said, no, it's your stomach. <laughs> and I, it was a bit harsh, a bit harsh, wouldn't you say? My thought in the car was, who the hell has something at 5 o'clock on a Tuesday in St. Paul? <laughs> Old people! <laughs> He doesn't have to go anywhere. He's probably been here for lunch and sat here all afternoon. The immortal words of Donald Trump or P.T. Barnum, you can fool some of the people all the time. And usually, that's enough. <laughs> Congratulations, Tom. So, um, Peter, Paul, and Mary ruined my life. I thought I was going to have an opportunity to make a living being a folk singer and that you could become a multimillionaire doing that. And after playing for bars and for drunks, I realized that that wasn't the way to make a living, so I went back to law school and quit dealing with drunks and bar owners, so. But I have to go with Peter, Paul, and Mary, so to the tune of Puff the Magic. We hope he is successful and retirement is his game. He leaves the halls of power and they'll never be the same, but if he flunks retirement, and can't avoid the shame <laughs> of coming out to hearings, moving bills, and playing this game. We hope he'll make a call to Kitty and try to place some blame, or call up his psychiatrist and they'll have him declared insane. <laughs> oh, Dominic Sposetto, he lobbied in St. Paul, and the corridors and committee rooms, and often in the hall. Senators and staffers, representatives heard his call, and he always hoped he had their vote, and he always had a ball. Here's to uh, many years of biking, golfing, drinking some good Italian wine, and organizing an Italian trip for all of your close and personal friends. <laughs> I've always measured a person by what they've done for others. Dominic has done a great job. Dominic's one of the guys at the top of my good guy list. So thank you for all your work. One of the things that guys like Greg and I have to rely on in our jobs are lobbyists that we can trust. Dominic never has ever, ever come into my office and tried to get me to do something that he knew I couldn't do. And that's something you can respect in a person. And that's what I love about the guy. I just want to thank you all for coming. This has been really a very impressive event, my career in lobbying. It really has been fun. I learned a lot. 
But the most important part was I met people like you, and I shared experiences with you, and I shared friendship with you, and that's the part that I will remember forever. Dominic, I've got to tell you, as your conservative best friend, I, I have to say congratulations, and I can hardly wait to join you in the retirement community. I'll even live with you. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Let me just say this um, on behalf of Dominic Esposito. Uh, he's one of the many reasons in my 29 years of owning an insurance agency, I never hesitated to pay my dues. I knew we were well represented in St. Paul, and he would always rally the people when we needed that. Um, he's a great professional. He's going to close out this meeting for us. But immediately following the luncheon, please stop by the MIB booth to uh, shake his hand and congratulate him on a, on a job he's done so well. Thank you. Well, thank you, Hal. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. You know, I started this game in 1982 uh, with no idea what I was doing. Uh, I met a lot of people. I learned a lot about the, the industry. My background was working in, basically, I was educated to be a public administrator, like a city manager or something like that, and realized almost immediately I didn't want to work for elected officials. So I decided I wanted to work for professional associations and when I had an opportunity to interview for this job in 1982, I was very pleased to become the uh, legislative representative for the independent insurance agents. I can't believe I've done it for 37 years. It seems a lot like it just started yesterday. You notice from the photos that Dan and I started pretty much at the same time. He still looks the same. <laughs> What's that about? Is there some sort of deal you made with someone I don't know? That's weird. Um, we were at the bar last night, and we were, we were chatting, and uh, I was talking about I had the opportunity to meet uh, five presidents of the United States, and they're very impressive, but I want to say that I think there are more impressive people in this room than the presidents I've met. How's that for sucking up? <laughs> I still have it, don't I? It's good, good. So as I head into retirement, uh, I'm very cognizant now of uh, Medicare. I'm a huge fan of Medicare. And uh, I'm looking forward to my Social Security. So uh, you Republicans in the room, I think there may be a half a dozen or so, keep your hands off my entitlement. <laughs> Roberta. All right. Well, really what I wanted to say is that I wanted to thank you for the privilege and honor of representing you for the 37 years I have. Uh, and I think you'll be very pleased with the replacement that we're discussing. Uh, I think you'll find her to be even better uh, than me, and I think it will we'll take you forward into the future. I know there are many challenges ahead, but I think we're organized and prepared for it, and the independent insurance age, uh, system has survived many threats, the Internet, uh, captive companies, and a variety of assaults, but we're still here, we're still working, and we're working strong. Uh, I just want to mention I did get an eagle, Earlier, was it yesterday, I got an eagle, and if you noticed at the end of that uh, movie, I was given an electronic bicycle, which is going to be very exciting. And uh, I just, uh, if someone wants to provide some liability insurance for me, uh, meet me outside, I think I may need it, but. So as Hal said, I'd like to join me, uh, join me at a table outside the front of the expo uh, for kind words, and I believe I'm either giving out donuts, pancakes, or cupcakes. I'm not exactly sure, but please stop by and say hi. And uh, let me end by saying uh, the expo is out of the door to the right. Enjoy yourselves, and thank you all for coming. Thank you.